This morning, our first speaker is amazing, amazing man. And his name is John Samuel. Mr. John Samuel was born in Tirunelveli in Tamil Nadu. He worked as the Chief Postmaster General of India. He is the man who built and transformed Speedpost in India from its inception in 1986. His vision is to be actively involved in nation building that will lead India becoming a developed and noble nation. Let's put our hands and welcome Uncle John Samuel. 40 years ago, it was in 1980, God called me and pushed me into civil services. There was a time I had an inner call, inner urge that this nation of one point, those days it was 1.1 billion people should be transformed, should be touched. My immediate urge was, how can this nation of a large number of people, more than 1 billion people, they'll be touched by God's love. They'll be touched by God's blessing. And God pushed me into civil service. I said, this is an opportunity for me to make a difference in the whole nation. Make a difference irrespective of caste, creed, color, nationalities. There was a time I felt that India, where the poverty is of a very, very high dimension, I am not sure whether you are aware of it or not, According to Rangarajan Committee, which was in 2014, which br brought out its report, 29.5% of the people of India come below poverty line. What does this below poverty line mean? Per day, if you get 32 rupees in a village or 30, 47 rupees in a city, that's the poverty line. 29.5% of the people are living below poverty line. Who will raise them up? These are my people. Can they be lifted up from the level of poverty? Today you and I are <clears throat> having a very, very high level of probably in our life expectancy is somewhere around 70, 68, 70. You go to some of the Rural areas, especially tribal areas in Jharkhand, there, according to 2011 census, the average life expectancy, when you and I are enjoying 68 to 72 years, there the average life expectancy, according to 2011 census, is just 42 years, pathetic 42 years. God said, John, I want you to touch this nation. I want you to be involved in the transformation of this nation. That's the reason I am sending you to the whole nation to transform this nation. God wanted me to make a difference in this nation. That's how the whole thing changed in my life. In 1980, when God pushed me into the civil service. My mind was full of dreams. A dream which God gave me. I had many opportunities to have this dream living out. And uh, I had a lot of opportunities to sit with many of the presidents and prime ministers and governors. And one of the person whom I really admired was Dr. Abdul Kalam. When he then he came in, when we were discussing quite a lot with Dr. Abdul Kalam, he said, John, I want you to dream big dreams for this nation. The dream that I am talking about is not the one that you will see in your sleep, but dream is the thing which does not let you sleep. Today, I stand before you because God still has given me that dream that this nation of 1.3 billion people, there should be no tears in the eyes of these people. Who will bring the change? Will the church, will the people
committed people who are sitting here, will you get out of the four walls of the church and then transform the society? Good to sing lovely songs, sing hallelujah, it's wonderful. But God called me and said, John, apart from singing these songs, I want you to bring a transformation in this nation. Quite often when I sit with some of the governors, they used to tell me, John, we see you touching the lives of people. We see the real passion in you to make a difference. And we also know that there are many committed Christians in the church. Why is it that they don't come out of the church? Why is it that they don't come out of the four walls of the church and bring transformation? If only the committed Christians can come out of the four walls of the church, bring transformation, things will be far better. I realize that uphill dreams and downhill habits, they don't go together. I need to dream, not only really dream, I need to dare. I need to do something. That's how God pushed me into the civil service. I'm really amazed by this man, Mr. Ghali, who was the sixth Secretary General of the United Nations. He was a Coptic Christian. He was very close with the President of Egypt. He brought out an agenda for peace. He brought out a beautiful paper and he sat with the president as to how Egypt and Israel can live peacefully. What's your agenda for this nation? What's your agenda for the city? What's your agenda for the nations? That's what God called me. In 1980, when I got into the service, from that time onwards, probably I have been away from Tamil Nadu. I'm also from Tamil Nadu, but I lived in Kerala for almost 78 years. Malayalatla Nanayatis Samsari Kandariyam. That's a place probably I know how to read, how to write, how to speak. Eight years I was there, the initial stages, and then from that time onwards, I moved to North India, different parts of India. What's the agenda? Today, I am sitting down with the United Nations, people of United, the leaders of the United Nations. What kind of agenda that we need to have for the whole world? You'll be aware of the <clears throat> Sustainable Development Goals, 17 goals. Where are the committed Christians to implement these 17 goals? Where are the Christians in the United Nations who will give them a new direction so that the whole world can be changed. Don't think that Christian's role is only the four walls of the church. Who will touch India? Who will touch the neighboring countries? South Asia, Southeast Asian countries, most of the countries are extremely poor. Who will touch them? What kind of nation do you want to have? This was my dream. Three years back when one of the universities in the United States of America, they called me and said, John, I want you to come and talk to us. What kind of nation that we should have? What kind of future that we need to create? Not only to USA, to many countries today, I've been talking to them. What kind of nation that we want to have? What kind of India that we want to have? A nation with prosperity and at the same time, a nation with nobility. A nation where there is inclusiveness. A nation where there is no poverty. To that nation, God is calling us. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Psalm 33 verse 12 says, What's your purpose? What's your dream? What's your priority? What's your agenda? That's this morning. That same call that I had, I want to put the same question to you. Seven mountains of influence that are before us. Economy. Some of you are working in companies. Very few are working in the government. I do not know why. Family, religion, media, education, arts. In different areas, 
if God is calling us, God call me to government, maybe God calls you to different areas of influence. Don't sit within the four walls of the church. Come out, go and make a difference. When I started the service, one of the first thing was many questions that came to me, John, is it possible to live with integrity? That too in the government. I said, in the initial two years, if you can survive, then the remaining is quite okay. The initial two years or three years, people will come and test you. What kind of person you are? Are you a person of integrity? And those three years, God helped me because it was my commitment before the Lord that I will live for God in my life. I will be a person of integrity. I'll be a man like Daniel. I'll be a man like Joseph. And with that determination, the initial three years set me. And then later on, absolutely there's no issue. If I can fail even in one person, everything fails. God help me that I should lead my life with integrity. And one of the things, the earlier thing that I learned, that was at earlier time, I had a small problem in my like ingrowing toenail. I do not know how many of you know that. Ingrowing toenail, as a result of that, probably I was finding it difficult to put my shoes. To many formal functions, I had a lot of difficulties. I had two times or three times, I went to the hospital, they said, yes, the nail has to be excised. Very simple, they used to say. The doctors were very good to me. First time, they removed the nail. I said, fine. Second time, after three months, again, they removed the nail. It was difficult. Third time, again, they said, yes, you have to remove the nail. This is time I was, it was 1983, I was posted to Kullam, my first posting. And uh, I went to the doctor and said, sir, three times I removed my, line, my nail and again it is paining a lot. What should I do? He said, John, come over there. I will get it removed. I rang up my dad and mom. Dad, I know you are people of prayer. Three times I have removed. I don't know what to do. I don't want to live this kind of life where every three months, four months I should remove my nails. I don't know. My dad is a man of prayer. He said, John, I and your mom, we will fast and pray for you. I suggest, will you pray along with us? Will you also fast and pray? That was the first time I said, Lord, I am going to fast and pray. 1983, Kollam. I started fasting and praying. I did not go to the doctor. He said, John, what happened? Why you didn't come to me? I said, I am fasting and praying. 1983, to the, today is 2020. No more problems. No more problems. Don't rely on anyone more than you rely on God. Every problem that I face, whether it is a personal, official, always let it on God. Let me move on to the second story. I don't know, this is my picture. This is many years back, 1991. This was a small one-page article on India Today. 1986, I was a, just a young boy, just a young man. God gave us the wisdom that we should start a service called Speed Post. Those days it was a post office was having basically monopoly. Many of my own friends suggested, what is the need for starting speed post? Already we are having registered post. I said, man, we need to provide better service. We need to provide speed. We need to provide reliability. We need to provide tracking. We need to collect it from the customer's premises. We need to provide international services. 86, we started speed post. Yes. God wants you not only in terms of your character, God wants you in terms of your competence. Wherever you work, you may be working in a private sector, you may be working in the hospital, you may be working as a teacher. Are you competent enough? Are you excellent? And we said, we deliver excellence. This is the theme that I gave. We deliver excellence. And... Uh, 
I was going through this book called Good to Great by Jim Collins. Quite unusually, this management book, he talks about two important things that should happen in order that your organization becomes a great nation, a great organization. High level of competence coupled with high level of character. God guided me at every step. When you work in the government, you need to be highly competent. You need to be excellent in every area of your life. I know there are some government officers over here. In government, they judge you every year, a confidential record, where they put you at various level, maybe average, good, very good, excellent. Let me tell you, if you are rated as good in government, if you are rated as good in government, you cannot be promoted. Good is no good, even in government. Unless you are rated as very good, unless you are rated as excellent, God enabled me to have that excellence in many of my confidential records. That's how the government picked me up in specific postings, both within India and outside India, in different parts, because God has kept me like Daniel. Daniel was a man who was not only a man of character, but he was a man of competence. He was distinguished above everybody else. That's what Daniel chapter 6 says. High level of competence. Wherever you are, focus on excellence. What's excellence? Often, the enemy of the best is the good. Quite often, we are so satisfied with being good. I am good. My children are good. But don't be satisfied with that. God wants us to move to the next level of excellence. Let me simply ask you, if when we talk of excellence, it is not just excellent in one area, but excellence in every small area. Can you really improve on things? What's the power of 1 to the power of 365? 1 to the power of 365. Yes? 1 to the power of 365. Come on. 1. Now you tell me, what is 1.01 1 .01 to the power of 365? 1.01 1 .01 to the power of 365. It's 37.8. Make a small difference every day. There'll be a huge thing. God wants us to be people of excellence. This is what he said to the man who brought five more. Well done. Excellent. Good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things, but I will put you in charge of many things. Let me move to my third story, 23rd February 2011, Wednesday, morning 11 o'clock, my flight lands in Srinagar. I was picked up by the government, both by the governor as well as the chief minister of Jammu and Kashmir, that I should be posted over there. Tough times, I thought. I rang up my wife, she was at that time in London with my daughter and I asked her, Ramona, they are asking us to go to Kashmir. Would you like to go there? She said, John, you know, for our honeymoon, we went to Kashmir. I have never been to Ladakh. Now let's go. If God sends us over there. Let's go ahead. My flights land there. Beautiful place. Just come out. And outside, it's full of snow. It was February. I just come out of the airport. A white car, ambassador car with a red light is waiting for me. Many people are waiting there. Sir, welcome. Please get into the car. I opened the back side of the door. It was a little tough for me to open it. I asked them, the car looks good. Why is it that I am not able to open the back door quickly? He says, sir, this is a car which is bulletproof car. Get inside. Look at the back. There's a group of four or five people standing with the stand gun to protect me. 
In the front, there is another car, again, four or five people to protect me. And I said inside, he says, sir, you are the chief postmaster general. You are one of the terrorist targets. Be careful. Don't go out anywhere. Just stay in your place. If necessary, take leave and go and sit in Delhi. That's the time I told this gentleman, my help comes from above. My help comes from above. Two years and six months I was there. I could touch the lives of many people. God placed me there to transform Kashmir. Today you go and ask every person over there in Kashmir. They will remember me because of what I did to the people in Kashmir, Ladakh and Jammu. God said, I want you to be a man of courage. Move from the comfort zone to courage zone. I still remember, I said, I want to give something good to these people. Dal Lake is a very special place. The first world's first floating post office was born. Today you go and watch, go and see the first floating post office. It still stands there. People regard because that is a place where I could be involved in transforming the nation. All that is necessary for the triumph of the evil is that good men like you and me, good committed people like you and me, if we don't do anything, the evil will triumph. We want to bring transformation. You can live an iconic and noble life or you can be a victim of your own toxic and trivial pursuit, but you can't be both. Let me come to the last story. There's a beautiful book, Why Nations Fail. It says, when leaders fail, nations fail. When institutions fail, nations fail. I want to build many leaders. Today, under the term, noble leaders, noble nation, we have started mentoring young boys and girls to be in the civil service absolutely free of cost. I live in Delhi. This is some of the people who are being mentored by me on a regular basis. Two of the girls who are right there in the photograph, next month they are going to attend the interview. Last year there were three people who got into the civil service, one into the IAS and one into IPS. Today, this year, five of them are joining the civil services. Bill leaders across the world, everywhere. This is your life. This is your story. Will you write it well? I want you to end, I want to end this with this thing. W I N. Work well. Whatever you do, work well. Impact the society. Never give up. This is my mission statement to be involved actively in nation building that will lead India becoming a developed and na noble nation soon. Let me end up with this. You know who this man is? Who this man is? Steve Jobs. He says John Scully who was the president of Pepsi company. John, do you want to spend the rest of your life Selling sugared water, he means Pepsi. Do you want to spend the rest of your life selling sugared water or do you want a chance to change the world? My dear friends, do you want to spend the rest of your life doing what you are doing or do you want a chance to change India? God bless you. I'll ask uh, the Raj Shekhar and, and uh, Sister Deepa. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, let's put our hands together, please. Thank you. Thank you very much.